हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर विवेक वर्मा एंड आई एम सीनियर कंसल्टेंट एंड हेड ऑफ मस्कुलर स्केलेटल ऑनकोलॉजी यूनिट एट मैक्स हॉस्पिटल्स सो टुडे आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग विथ यू अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक एंड दैट इज अबाउट डूइंग द बायोप्सी इन ट्यूमर्स वाई एम सेम इट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दिस इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप द इंटरवेंशनल स्टेप वेयर नॉट ओनली यू come to know about the histology of what you are dealing with but also you start planning your surgical procedure which is going to be the definitive treatment for that particular tumor when we talk about the principles and techniques these are based on the general principles which should be followed in all the cases not necessary it is bone or soft tissue but in any type of biopsies of course the biopsy of oral cavity may be a little different and uh, if you are doing some another biopsy from the gi tract that will be done differently but for a resident a surgical resident the principles of biopsy that is asked in the exam should be uh, based on how how the answer should be based on how we are going to discuss today in this topic and uh, a lot of things have changed and uh, there are a lot of synonyms which are used in different stages we will discuss that and uh, after this we can also have a live session where uh, the questions and answers can be discussed directly with you all so let's start what what is going to be the objective today for our uh, case so one we are going to learn the biopsy the different types of biopsy that is asked the definitions and other things more importantly the question that is commonly asked even in the general surgery in orthopedics even in surgical oncology the principles of biopsy that is very important and not just for theoretical purpose but that is it is for our own learning we are not going to be a resident we are not always going to be somebody who is spoon fed many of us are even practicing surgeons and so the principles which are discussed are really based on the practical aspects that we see every day that is the difference between when you see and learn from a book and when you have a teacher with you so the teacher imparts you the experience what he has faced and it it gives you a more broader zone of understanding a uh, technical and practical solutions to the problems that we face and i hope i'm able to deliver that to you and i have made modules for the techniques of biopsy in bone and soft tissue tumors differently so these are also accompanied with surgical videos and it will help you in understanding really how we do it so when we talk about biopsy by definition it is a procedure by which we remove a tissue from a body to make the diagnosis and even it helps to define the extent of the disease which is sometimes uh, if it is a metastatic lesion you may need biopsy to find the extent of the disease in a primary lesion you need to find the diagnosis of the disease and how it is caused why it is caused the question sometimes asked is if between fnsc and biopsy what to choose so please remember that biopsy is the gold standard for diagnosis when we talk about fnsc fnsc is fine needle aspiration cytology that gives you it is done with the help of a, a needle which takes up aspirate you make this smear and you see the cells under microscope to find the diagnosis that may be adequate in certain tumors like in thyroid or in certain breast diseases but for diagnosis of a primary uh, neoplasm biopsy is the gold standard fnsc should be avoided and if fnsc is done it should be supplemented with a biopsy why so why fnsc is not the definitive modality for confirming the diagnosis that is another part because 
nowadays it is not just that we need to know what is what is the tumor whether just saying that it is a malignancy or no malignancy doesn't suffice if it is a malignant tumor what is the grade of the tumor because in a bone tumor or soft tissue tumor or any musculoskeletal tumor you need to also decide about the role of adjuvant treatment whether you need to add a radiation therapy to it or you need to give chemotherapy to it for which you need a more tissue second the diagnosis is no more just restricted to your microscopic examination it is beyond that we have to see that uh, what is uh, whether what is the one is the grade what i'm talking about and second we also need to see uh, the other histological types it may have various histological subtypes that for which you need a further uh, more tissues that is absent in uh, fnac specimen you need to go for immunohistochemical markers and stainings to further sub, sometimes subtype to know what it is for example if you have seen small round blue cell tumors in your fnac what is seen it may be a malignancy but it needs to be further sub typed into whether it is ewing sarcoma it is synovial sarcoma it is lymphoma if you have done biopsy from a node it can be anything you need more tissue to go for isc staining and marker furthermore you need to do uh, translocation studies molecular testing for which you need more tissues you need not do again and again repeated sampling from the same patient so fns is no more the diagnostic modality so what is the role of fnac it is used mainly in metastatic setting when you have you know the primary diagnosis what is it and you see some another lesions in the body you need to prove whether it is or not a tumor or what is it same etiology or not you do fnac from that part that is okay and once there is a recurrence you have already a diagnosis you just want to prove whether it is a malignancy or not you may use fnac so the main reasons why we do not rely on fnac because of limited sample you cannot do further the other staining test for which you need more the grade cannot be done grading of the tumor cannot be done and then for doing molecular testing you need more sample all these things is possible once you have core biopsy which is done with the help of a proper uh, i will discuss in detail about that but before we discuss in detail about the techniques of biopsy and how to do the biopsy the general principles of biopsy have to be followed so before going to the technique let us discuss the principles of biopsy so the biopsy you all have read i know these topics which i am telling you you all must have read that biopsy should be ideally be done after complete clinical and radiological work up it should be done by the team which is going to do the final surgery but why so does it really make a difference all this is just given in the book so we will discuss the relevant aspects of it the clinical aspects of it so that you understand really why we need why why such things are written in the book so see there is a logic behind everything and if we understand the logic if we understand the concepts this is something which is for the lifetime this is not just for passing the exams and that is why the conceptual surgery the teaching is meant for this so let's see the first point that it should be performed after complete clinical and radiological work up why is it so because so this was a case where this patient had a large soft tissue mass so you can see that there is a large soft tissue mass looking at it it looks very easy you can do the biopsy from any site but is it going to yield you the result from wherever you take the biopsy no we know that these tumors have different areas these are called heterogeneous what does it mean means the uniformity of the cells is different in different parts some part may be cystic some may be necrotic some may be 
solid areas where the active tumor part is there. If you just look at it, you see these all white structures, these are quite cystic areas. There are some solid areas what you see here in the other parts as well. Normally when the, if we look at this is the tumor, so normally the tumor grows outwards wherever if this is the origin point, the slowly the cells start migrating. So they grow outwards. So what happens in the process? That when they grow outwards, the central part starts becoming dead and necrotic and more active zones are on the peripheral areas. In between you may see the necrotic zones where the necrotic zones in the center, there may be cystic filled with fluid because of reactive hemorrhage and other things that may be there present in between. And if we do biopsy from these areas where there is necrosis or uh, cystic areas, we may yield a false negative results. So where should we target? We should target the solid areas. And how do we know that? By doing complete workup, by doing the complete radiological workup, which in general for any musculoskeletal tumors involves your ultrasonography, MRI and MRI is the gold standard for that. Then your x-rays. So all these things helps us to identify, map the disease, identify the location, the site of diagnosis which tells about the activity of the lesion and sometimes even the PET scan in certain situations helps once there is uh, you see a lesion, large lesion and your biopsy is not yielding the results so probably you are not targeting the right areas and a PET scan would show you exactly the hot uptake areas. But as such PET scan is more of a, a staging investigation rather than a diagnostic one. So let us not go into the details of that but let us just focus now on the right principles. Why a complete history and evaluation is necessary? So there is a lot of importance on the clinical aspect and we must never underestimate that. Even if you have a radiological imaging which shows something a feature like say a sarcoma but the history is for uh, a very long duration or if there is a history of remissions and exacerbations sometimes the swelling decreases sometimes increases your suspicion is that it is more likely to be an inflammatory etiology. If uh, there is a history of trauma, you have to see even though a traumatic history may uh, predispose to development of myositis ossificans and in such situations sometimes if you do the biopsy you see some uh, bone formation there or osteoid and you mistake it for a sarcoma, you say it is extraskeletal osteosarcoma. That is why a detailed clinical history is very, very, very important. Right. So the first principle it should be done after complete clinical and radiological workup and I am sure that now you know why we say so.